Well, the divided nation chose to give Barack Obama another chance. Now, leading up to the election, political commentators were actually split as the voters in uh, their predictions calling for an Obama win and others a Romney win. So, Ottawa Sun columnist Anthony Fury predicted a Republican victory, and he joins us now from Ottawa. It wasn't even close, though, Anthony. Where, where, where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? Well, Pat, yesterday you and I were talking about where the independents would swing. I also uh, predicted that the hopey, changey aspect of uh, the campaign in 2012 would not be present. And, and from that perspective, I, I'd like to say I think I was right. Let's go back four years ago and let's see what happened then. Obama did not win so much as other factors won in that it was an election against George Bush and it was an election for, uh, for historic components. Remember, there were people crying in the streets and, 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 and in groups of, 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 of people jumping around, tears streaming down their faces based on this historic component of voting an African-American president, which had very little to do with Obama and the quality of his ideas. Now in 2012, we, we've actually found that that, that is not the case, uh, neither of those facets. So in some sense, Obama won more fair and square than he did four years ago. In another sense, that, that attitude, the Hopi Changey, did diminish. Yeah, except that uh, they started off the campaign focused on the economy. And we had a commentator earlier this morning indicated it, had they stayed on the economy, they might have won this. Instead, they distracted people with uh, things like Benghazi or, or other events that were peripheral to the economy. What do you think? Uh, regardless of what you think of the Benghazi situation, that's become a technical argument only because it's about he said, she said, what was in these certain emails, these communications, what, what the correct response in very specific moments was. And I think the Benghazi narrative is a hard thing for just average people to pay attention to. The economic argument and where Romney essentially did not proceed to lead on it but became a follower was he did not hammer these points home repeatedly. When that when that scandalous video came out in which he said 47% of Americans have entitlement culture ingrained in them, he was correct, and he didn't use that as an opportunity to double down and say, all right, let's, let's have a greater discussion about this. He said, oh, no, I, I don't so much feel that way. He backed off, and he portrayed himself as obama light in those categories. Well, look, the problem with being a, a light version of, of whoever is that why would we vote for you when we can get the real thing in, in Obama? Yeah, good point. And, and it was seen as a bit of a flip-flop to, or at least poorly handled as far as messaging uh, is concerned. Did he, through the course of the election, slide to the middle? Because at the uh, <laughs> Republican National Convention, he seemed to be squarely uh, in the conservative camp. Did he slide to the middle, or has he always been in the middle, and he slid to the right on, on certain factors to begin with? People have long wondered how much social conservatism he has because of his religious background. People assume he'd be more fiscally conservative because of his business background. Uh, so many people, of course, want to, be, want to be the politician for everyone, and by doing so, they become the politician for no one. I, I mean, I, I'd argue that applies to Barack Obama in many instances, too. But we do find Mitt Romney sliding around on a variety of issues, and I think that's one of the reasons why people want wanted Chris Christie uh, to actually run for the Republican nomination and why they thought he'd win because he says clear cut and Ron Paul's a guy like this too this is what I believe these are my principles hell or high water I'm going through with this there would have been no flip-flopping with guys like that and whether or not they would have ultimately triumphed they would have stuck by their guns and I think people would have respected them for for their ingrained principles but so effectively you're saying Romney was the wrong guy he went to the middle though Anthony for exactly the reasons we talked about yesterday he wanted the women he wanted the Latinos he wanted the uh, African Americans no, and you're completely right on that perspective, but I think it just shows that people don't necessarily respect you when you go and, and do essentially special interest group polling approaches. When you, when you bend your position a little bit to appeal to these people, bend it the other way to appeal to other folks. We live in the age of Twitter and social media and people are recording everything. Y you can't be everything to everyone because they know, they see that when you go into the other room, you tell the other guy a different side. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, going forward, uh, we've got this, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, House of Representatives that's Republican. We've got a Senate that's a, dem a Democratic uh, split Congress, if you will. Uh, what do you think happens? Well, 
I'm really tired of hearing the narrative about there needs to be compromise. And generally, what people say is that uh, Tea Party type candidates, or even not people who are, who are Tea Partiers, but representatives who consider themselves fiscally conservative, they need, they need to give in and allow for, for tax increases. The only problem with that, I'd say, Pat, is that that's actually been the norm. That's been the norm, whether it's been a Republican or Democrat-controlled House or President, that we've essentially had the creeping creeping increase in government for, for many decades, and I think the compromise would be to not make government grow. Obviously, you get to what's called a fiscal cliff, and there's going to be a, have to be some tough decisions made there, but I, I do not think that anybody should at all accept the narrative that all these fiscal conservatives just need to chill out and just let, let another trillion or two roll onto the debt. I do not think that should be accepted in the four years ahead as, as a legitimate argument. On the flip side, though, Anthony, do you see changes in terms of um, you know compromise being worked out that doesn't necessarily have higher taxes, but uh, does include uh, closing loopholes and special treatment of some kinds of incomes like dividend or capital gains or, or those kinds of things happening to make up a, any kind of a revenue shortfall. Absolutely, and, and there is a there is a contingent of fiscal conservative, myself included, who's, who's a major fan of cutting out corporate cronyism. Now, of course, the idea of capital gains being taxed uh, at the same level as regular taxation, that's not a big corporate cronyism scandal. That's just an argument about tax policy. I, I think there's something to be said about people whose, whose primary income actually comes from capital gains, and you can actually tax the threshold at an amount where you're not uh, penalizing the middle class and not having their capital gains taxation raised. Sure, we can see that, but but at the same time, we may see Barack Obama move towards more more punitive measures that people like Elizabeth Warren might be interested in, a general soak the rich policy. I, I think we'll definitely see that. Is that compromise? No, because compromise would be to be reducing entitlement culture, that, uh, compromise from, from Obama's side, that is. Yeah. Anthony, great to chat. Thanks. Always. Thanks. I don't